Okay, so I'm uh, Pula Amawi. I'm uh, currently going to show you ZombieSim project. And the ZombieSim is basically um, a zombie simulator to show you inf how infections work in humans and infection rates and so on. I will be starting with the uh, introduction and recap for what we did beforehand. And uh, then I will show you a small demo of the solution and uh, performance analysis. Um, unfortunately, Liquid and Vampire, we had problems with them, so we uh, switched to another one uh, that I'll show you soon. And uh, then moving on to the conclusion and the future work, uh, which we have a bit of space there to, to work on the problem. So starting with the introduction and recap, uh, recapping uh, what was introduced before, so basically, zombie simulator, as I said, it's um, a way to investigate uh, infection spreads on uh, multiple uh, factors. And uh, the good thing about our project that we made it in a way that it's plug and play. So each factor that you see here uh, comes in a configuration file separate from the executable. And the configuration file is very easily um, like changeable, that you can change the number of cities, populations, uh, people that uh, start initially sick, the infection rate, and so on. So, um, for example, starting with the behaviors, we have in each city, uh, we have a workspace and um, homes or residential area. So, um, you can also play around with the cycle which also, again, is in the configuration file. So nothing is, uh, you can play dynamically with everything. Nothing is just sits on stone. And um, they go from home to work and work to home. And uh, of course, they infect each other if they collide uh, with sick people. Uh, some of the behaviors, for example, um, they are environmental and biological. Environmental, as you may know, that uh, for example, how many cities, uh, what is the size of the city, what is the population. Uh, we started with a um, kind of basic number, the population in each city in the simulation that I will show you is uh, only 5,000, uh, but you can modify it as, as much. Uh, when it comes to the biological factors, uh, there is, for example, the infection rate. There is also a death rate, which is a very low percentage, but again, you can modify it, uh, that some humans may die uh, while being sick. And if the human stays sick for a while, there's a sick duration cycle. So after a couple of cycles, uh, the human, if did not die, will just uh, go back to being healthy. So um, as I already mentioned, that you can easily add the factors. And uh, the goal, as you may all know, to learn more about the product computing and uh, analyzing the efficiency. Uh, I will kind of go a bit fast over this because uh, we did one uh, just to explain and uh, I will show you the actual uh, demo. So, but it's also important to note that uh, we kind of started with a parallel solution due to multiple reasons that since we're using a game engine that has both uh, a physical engine for the collision and a visualization. So we really have to start with uh, at least a, a couple of threads we can't just start sequentially, because if we start sequentially, uh, first of all, the humans won't move. So the simulation will just look uh, static, uh, like, a, like an image. And um, there are also other factors that if they don't move, then they don't collide. If they don't collide, they don't really get sick. If they don't uh, get sick, then the whole idea is not really working. Uh, so we start with multiple uh, threads for uh, the land creation, for the city, populations, and for the uh, action. Actions, as uh, I said, moving and so on. Moving, colliding, infecting each other. Uh, this is a very basic um, overview that uh, will be much more uh, easier to understand with the demo, the video embedded. Um, so uh, there's residential, there's business, there's different sizes. The cities can uh, can be added very easy. Uh, we currently have three cities, but they can be manipulated, added, uh, both uh, the number of the cities, um, the population, and so on. The number of the cities you simply, in the config file, you just add a comma, a new random name of a city, you will get another, a different city. So it's that simple. 
for the tech stack I'm um, mentioning here because it's, uh, it has to do with the um, challenges that uh, faced us. Uh, first of all, we uh, chose C++ for the performance and also for basically some of the uh, experiences in the team. And Micah, to be specific, she has a really nice experience in C++, uh, but also she wanted to use a Boost Library. Boost Library was nice and um, did the job. But the problem, uh, we uh, had some conflicts with it uh, when it comes to Vampire and Liquid because they're uh, more targeted to other uh, parallel execution levels. Uh, there's also LC Pixel Game Engine. This is for both the visualization and also the physical collisions. And instead of Liquid and uh, Vampire, uh, which we hope to try to uh, make them run again when we recompile it again on the HPC, uh, but for now, we used uh, Hotspot. It's kind of similar to Vampire, uh, but on the, um, on the top side, that it's easy. I mean, on the positive side, it's easy. Is it used? It's uh, nice. On the negative side, it has uh, less functionality and much less graphs uh, that can be exported directly uh, in comparison to Vampire, for example. Uh, but it has um, some other results that cannot be exported as graphs. When it comes to the challenges, uh, as I already mentioned, uh, since we're using Boost Library, Vampire was kind of a bit hard to use. Uh, but the main problem was that um, it was much easier to compile it for uh, Arch Linux, specifically I'm using currently Manjaro, and, or uh, for Debian for a normal uh, desktop use, uh, Ubuntu, for example. Uh, but we had uh, massive problems, honestly, for compilation on the scientific uh, we will try to uh, rework that before the um, report. Hopefully, we can do so, but uh, I have to note it here. Uh, on the other hand, when it comes to Liquid, um, when you compare it to Vampire, it had the easy views that you can just basically um, use the um, CMD and you just run it with the executable. You don't have to recompile it, uh, wrap it, and compile it as, as in the case of Vampire. But on the negative side, it has hardware limitations, and uh, I was very unlucky with that because my Ryzen CPU didn't play nicely with it. And uh, also, like I referred to their, uh, their problem that they had it, uh, the issue on GitHub, and uh, they didn't really address it uh, for a very long time. Uh, so we, um, because of those challenges, we resorted to the use of Hotspot. As I said, it's nice, it's easy to use, uh, does maybe the minimum, but uh, not comparable, honestly, to Vampire. Uh, so we, we may try again with Vampire. When it comes to the solution, I hope you, you can see this uh, moving. It has a cycle of 10 seconds each. Uh, so you have um, basically three cities. That's why it's three squares. And uh, on one side, uh, up and down, I mean, uh, the work and the homes. Uh, so the population uh, currently in each city is 5,000. And uh, the initial start for sick, the red dots, the red dots are the sick humans, uh, 100 uh, each per 5,000, and the rest is uh, healthy. Uh, so we have a cycle that they keep moving uh, each 10 seconds. Again, also super easy to modify that. And, um, so maybe you can make it more realistic uh, because uh, we have a whole day cycle completion. And uh, they do start with um, 100 sick, infection rate of 5%, death rate of 1%. Maybe the infection rate should have been uh, higher, but we can also easily modify it uh, in the config file. And uh, anyone that has the executable and the config file can also do so. Uh, it doesn't uh, need recompilation or so on. So, so they move, as you can see. And they infect each other and uh, move again and so on and so forth, on and so forth. And uh, that's why also we needed uh, additional threads. So we started, uh, as I will mention soon, with the uh, kind of semi-parallel already solution, not sequential, uh, because as, as I said, we need a thread that is already there for them to move. We need a thread already there for the physical engine. We need a thread already there for the visualization. If it was fully sequential, then they wouldn't move. They would just um, sit there, it wouldn't simulate, uh, simulate it. But to try to compare it, uh, we also tried it um, 
we can manage the managing threads that do manage the population. So the managing threads can be uh, just one thread instead of 10, uh, which is the base, uh, which will, will make them much, much slower. Uh, so it can be almost sequential, let's say, if that's correct. Um, okay. So that would be it for the demo. So for the sequential versus parallel, we started, as I said, for the sequential execution, uh, parallel execution because of um, the reasons that I mentioned beforehand. And um, we have this plug and play config file that you can easily manipulate and you can uh, easily add threads. Uh, the more threads you add, uh, then uh, the population is spread over multiple threads. It makes it, it, makes it much faster. And uh, you can easily see that when using uh, hotspot. And also, actually, I forgot to mention here that you actually, uh, maybe it's uh, not easy to see, but there's an FPS on the top. And when you add the threads, the FPS is faster also. So you can, you can um, in real time, see that it is faster uh, or slower if you uh, lower the threads. So the, there's also the best threads that exist, uh, as I said, for the game engine itself. And there's the multiple threads that we have to have, visualization, for the moving, and the only thing that we can, uh, among the threads, I mean, that you can uh, modify uh, with it working in this manner with the game engine. Maybe later we can try it without the game engine, but it's, uh, it's much more fun and uh, to see how they're moving like this, are the managing threads. And we can, it's 10 days, you can go down to one, uh, go up, and so on. So for the scaling, um, we can um, scale the humans, the human objects. Uh, so more humans, of course, means slower because they're sharing uh, the same threads. Uh, on the other hand, more threads uh, scales better, so it becomes faster. For the infection rate, um, the more people we also notice that, uh, which is realistic, that the more people that are infected, there's more overlap to be done for the physical engine uh, for them to collide and infect each other. If they do so, uh, the FPS, you can see it going down, which is kind of uh, understandable uh, or like uh, expected to happen. Also, there's a very overlap. Um, when the work is divided, uh, when we have monsters, as I mentioned earlier, for the humans, uh, they, it scales better, it becomes faster. So it depends how you play around basically with the, with the config file that we have. Uh, for the performance, uh, unfortunately, I only have this because, uh, and with some graphs, because uh, we had, as I said, a lot of challenges with the compilation. So. Maybe we can add uh, a bit more uh, or much more when the report comes. Uh, but just uh, to get an idea that uh, when you compare, for example, uh, one thread to 10 threads, uh, you have over 6% degradation in the performance. Uh, I'm uh, only uh, giving you kind of an estimate because hard to tell that uh, I can show you soon with, uh, with the graph, but it's hard to tell how much the physical engine and the visualization will use uh, beforehand. You can only know it after you run it and uh, you see the result. Uh, so maybe I can also like uh, do a lot more simulations and see and compare uh, how much is that uh, different uh, while playing with it. Uh, so you can also like play with uh, how much it runs uh, while, while the hotspot is uh, checking the, the analysis. Uh, we're, it's just for 120 one seconds, uh, just to see this small one, it can be increased as much as you like in the config file also. So the hotspot, uh, which is the tool for, uh, instead of time here, uh, shows a lot of degradation when you go down with the threads, which is expected to happen. The only graph that uh, Hotspot can give for uh, like easily export without you manually doing it is this. Uh, unfortunately, for some reason, uh, you can see here there's like those exclamation marks, uh, question marks I mean. Uh, those are actually the zombie sim itself. Uh, we're not sure why it didn't uh, take the name, uh, but I can tell you this so it's easy to tell. Uh, so it's around 47% uh, was for this. Uh, this is the, one of the ladders for the physical engine, 
and the OLC is also a part of the game engine. So this is a physical one, and those uh, the OLC pixel is the visualization in the game engine, and um, and also you have the physics uh, happening already. Uh, so we uh, the the good thing about this is that there isn't much communication happening. So I guess the parallelism. I hope it's um, good. We need to do more to check, uh, but uh, we also have a good chunk that goes to the physical engine and to the OLC pixel, which is the part of the visualization for the game engine. And uh, also, like I'm not exactly sure that it is supposed to be this fraction or not, since it's the first time we use a game engine for such a simulation. So we don't really have a baseline to compare to. Is this too much? Is this a little? Is it uh, good for the game engine, I mean? Uh, but it runs smoothly. so. I hope that is good. When it comes to um, also hotspot, it can give us a lot of results, uh, but it tabularized like this, not as graphs. Uh, so maybe in the report, I can manually convert into graphs. Uh, but for example, this one, as I said, doesn't really show the name for some reason. Uh, this is a song sim, 47%. And this is a part of the physical engine. And then you have, um, those are actually not on the itself, it's uh, the visualizations. Uh, so, and you have the, uh, at the bottom, the libraries for uh, communication. So uh, at least the parallelism is working good. When it comes to what we conclude and uh, what do we hope to accomplish in the future is this. Um, we know, of course, that uh, we did learn a lot about parallel uh, execution importance and how much it can make things much more smoothly. Uh, but on the other hand, there was a lot of challenges, and in many areas, they were eye-opener because we, in some cases, honestly, we thought that that part is going to be easier and coding the um, simulation would be much harder. Uh, but also, it's uh, due to the fact to the honest fact that there's also like a difference in the team that uh, Michael, for example, is much more experienced in the C++. So maybe that fits her, but not uh, me, for example. So the compilation and working with the performance analysis uh, gave us much more problems, maybe to the, due to the use of uh, Boost and, um, and also the different uh, distributions that we have to use or we had to use. Uh, but at least uh, we did get the simulation to work, and uh, we can build on that to try uh, to maybe uh, compile it again for the cluster and uh, see if we can make a complete run. Because as you saw, that hotspot does something, but it's not as nearly as much as Vampir does, uh, which we would have preferred to work with. And um, for the goals, we think it's partially obtained that. Uh, we did got a, a good part, but um, I, we think that there's a lot of room for improvement also to not actually in the simulation maybe. We will check when we have more performance analysis, but we have to have more performance to get an idea if there is more work there or just more work and uh, making it more accessible on uh, the different uh, contributions and to get more analysis. Uh, but overall, the practice and the project was very nice uh, learning experience, and uh, I'm glad I'm glad that we did it. Uh, so I think yeah, we learned a lot there. For the future work, we can um, sure it's easy to just play with the context file, but we can also while playing for the uh, thread count, uh, do more performance analysis, as I said, and see how does it change, and what's the effects between. Uh, Simulation for zombie sim itself and uh, the visualization and the other layers. Uh, on the other hand, we can also maybe modify it uh, to uh, compile it without the visual layer or maybe also without the rest. So just the simulation itself without any visual layer to, um, to try to make it more sequential to see how big of a difference it is. Uh, but as I said, we started the design with the visual layer and uh, the inclusion of the game engine. Uh, so we uh, we could only test it as that. On the other hand, uh, since we're happy how the config file is used, 
uh, we can also, uh, I mean, sure it's commented now and it's kind of, um, for us it's easy to use, but it, it would be very nice to give uh, an instruction set for how to modify it for others to um, have accessibility to play around with the simulation and the config file to see how it works. Uh, so overall, um, that would be it for me, and I tried to use my um, my time since I'm alone to give you an overview in the 15 minutes of the whole thing instead of going uh, like uh, into too much details, since you would have that also in the future. Uh, but um, I hope uh, I would be able to answer uh, any of your questions. So thank you for your attention.